Hello folks, please bear with me today, I am I know this video might be a little bit late, but stick with me, we're going to have some fun, we're going to do some hobby nightmares. Today I, I've had my daughter, I've been doing lots of other things today, so I've been running around, uh, basically like a madman, trying to get things sorted out, but we are going to settle down and do some hobby nightmares together. If you like what I do, the subscribe button is down below, please go and give Composite Games your modelling love, if you're going to go out there and get any more models towards the summer, on the tournament scene, then make sure you head over there and get some models from them. Use the promo code Northern Exile down below to get yourself 5% off your order at checkout. Let's jump in to the old hobby nightmare, shall we? With Charles, who says, Good afternoon, North. My name is Charles, and you are absolutely free to use this in the video. However, all other names and several other identifying details will be changed by me in order to protect your, the privacy of those involved. You are given full consent to use this email transcript as it is written. Thank you very much. Always like getting these at the start of emails. Makes me feel all official and such. Allow me to start by stating that I greatly appreciate all that you do with your channel. Thank you. And the advice you give and often look forward to hearing your takes on things even if I do not always agree. That's fine, man. I have found listening to Hobby Nightmares while I paint to be one of my favourite pastimes and that the relaxation and total mental reset that comes with it to be invaluable. Here's the thing, and this is me, North, talking. I often, when I read lines like that, I'm often thinking, oh my god, they're going to be there just like painting some eyes of space marines or models and stuff, and they now their story's being read out. They're like, oh my god, and they just like, you know, screw it up. So hopefully you don't screw up your models whilst I'm reading this out. I have grown to absolutely love this hobby. Some might regard this story as a complete nightmare, enough to, earn, uh, to turn somebody away from Warhammer altogether. I, however, found it more humorous since throughout my life I've experienced far worse. I hope you can find a few laughs as well while you read and sip your tea. Thank you very much. I am a disabled veteran of the United States Marine Corps and still live in the US. Well, thank you for your service, man, even though it's not for my country, but you know, thank you all the same. I have recently gotten into the hobby of 40k right as the 10th edition released and have grown increasingly fond of it. I started with a few 9th edition box sets on discount and also picked up a Leviathan box as well. Unfortunately for my wallet, I had no one in my life at the time to warn me against starting three armies at once, but I am a glutton for punishment because I think they all look really cool. I play Ultramarines, my favourite colour is blue, Necrons and Tyranids, but my Space Marines are my most played faction. My father is a professional artist, so painting must run in my family. Pictures of models included. Okay, well let me just have a little look-see here. Um, again, with me going back and forth to different houses, um, I'm not really sure how we... No, that, it's not that one. Uh, oh, here we go. I found you already. Fantastic. Oh my god, these are big images. Alright, let me just uh, save these to my desktop and then I'll, I'll whack them on the screen. Um, in fact, that one will do. Okay, we'll we'll go with that one. That is, these are some nice looking models, dude. I quite like these. All right, excellent, 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 excellent. Whack that on there. Whack that on there. Image. Again, I apologise for me having to do this every time somebody sends me an image. But one, it's become like a thing on the channel, and uh, for me to do this. And number two, uh, deal with it. <laughs> As you do. Right. Lovely looking Space Marine models right there. Do you know what? The Assault Primaris are just badass. Like, I really do like it, but I also really love this model here. This central model here. The guy, you know, getting a sword out or getting a combat knife out. I love that pose so much that when I do my next character, my next lieutenant, that's the model I'm going with. He's going to be getting a sword out of his sheath there, of a scabbard. It's just one of those models that I really, really like. Really like the pose of. Anyway. I've only been painting since the start of 10th, but most of the techniques used on, a two, on 2D services can also be used on a 3D model, as I am not new to painting and art, only 40k. This is important to note for later, as it ties into the story. Lastly, I was an aircraft rescue firefighter. Wow. In the Marines and for the first part of my adult life, had to constantly be able to split second tactical decisions in life-or-death situations. 
And whilst this has nothing to do with civilian life, it transfers very effectively onto the tabletop. This is not a statement intended to puff up my image, rather. I'm simply stating that my life experiences have helped me become good at strategy and tactical decision making. And I win games pretty regularly due to my ability to adapt rather quickly. As I have had to do this with my life at risk on many occasions. Mate, mate that's not something that you need to be apologising for stating, alright? You know, you've earned the you've earned the rep, dude. You've earned the skills. It's okay. You you, you don't need to. And anyone saying that you know you're puffing your own chest up, chest out, just dude. I would say slap them in the face. But when you've been in the army, I've known guys at this. When you've been in the marines, especially, you don't feel the need to. You just look at them. I've got a mate. All right. Well, I'm sorry, Andy. I'm gonna out you. I've got a mate called Andy. He used to be in the Royal Marines, right? I've seen this guy clear people out with a look. And it's not even an angry look. It's just their look of, uh, yes. Would you like to finish that sentence, or are you going to shut the fuck up? Right? It's one of those looks. I'm very calm, just like, sorry, go on then. Finish your sentence. I'll wait. Yeah, and, and they just, they always back away. Anyone, anyone on a night out, if you're going to a bar or something, and a bit of ruckus happens, and, he gets in, and, he, and you, they come at him, just a look. A simple look. He doesn't get involved and go in swinging. He could break their arm. And he could do all sorts to them. But he doesn't. He doesn't have to. Right? Um, it's always the quiet ones. Is what I'm trying to say to you lads. Whenever you go into a place. If you see a, a, a rather well built man. And he's very quiet and very nice and jovial. But when violence kicks off he goes quiet. Step the fuck away from that man. And don't go anywhere near him. <laughs> uh, especially if you're in a working class city. Oh my god. Anyway. However, I will never find anything in life as serious as my time in the military, of course. And 40k is just as enjoyable, fun game that is completely meaningless in the grand scheme of things. It simply is just a fun hobby to help me cope with my health and my disability. And winning or losing doesn't really matter to me. I'm also a relatively attractive, handsome... Oh, God, come on. Now I'm gonna... Now I'm gonna call you shit, right? I am also a relatively attractive, handsome, well-groomed man. Fuck off. <laughs> all right all right all right maybe you are i don't know i don't know it's just funny the way you said it i'm also a relatively attractive handsome well-groomed man who does not convey the appearance of a nerd even though i am one but i have learned that my normal appearance sends shockwaves of fear right into the souls of the great unwashed ones all right all right okay just be aware i know you're not gonna give a shit right because because Marines don't, and people who've been in the military generally don't. But you may get a bit of shit in the comments for, for comments like that. Um, I don't know. And a lot of guys like this, they tend to dismiss it as like nerd jealousy, which it may be. It may actually be. I don't know. But uh, moving on. Enter someone who we will call Donald, after Donald Duck. Because the sound of every syllable uttered by this creature made me glad I am mostly deaf. Oh my god. I was still a fledgling player at the time, and looked forward to playing a game as often as I could, welcoming the variety of players, armies, and playstyles that opposed me. Donald had been playing 40k since 5th edition, and had half a dozen armies all sitting at around 5,000 points each. This guy loved Warhammer, so it seemed like a good idea to play a game against him, as I could probably learn a few things from him. I will not say how the connection was made to protect the privacy of Donald the Duck, but I will say that uh, like a smelly, putrid Jacqueline Hyde, he transformed into a complete goblin outside of the professional sector. This highly disturbed man-child arrived at the location we were playing at almost half an hour past the agreed meeting time. The first of many red flags of the afternoon uh, was that his excuse for being late was due to the fact that he simply just couldn't decide which of his sprawling armies to select to win with today? Oh, God. I abstained from reacting, <laughs> okay, due to my attention being fixed entirely on the vile burning sensation in my nostrils. This sulking crotch goblin <laughs> that stood before me reeked of a mildew smell that could only be described as a pile of soaking wet towels being left on a musty cold basement floor to marinate for a few weeks only to be collected and fashioned into the Naruto-themed clothing of old Donny Boy was wearing. 
I am a highly religious man who does not believe in forcing my religion on anyone. However, at this moment I felt a strong urge to take this walking turd down to the river and baptise him purely just for the sake of his own hygiene. Dude, I, I, you may have been in the military but you can write. Right, as much as I really want to take the piss out of you for that, you know, I'm very handsome comment before. Because, listen, dude, you're American, right? You don't get it. As a Brit as a British guy, the cynicism in us, as soon as somebody says, oh, I unironically, yeah, I'm a good-looking guy, every British bloke goes, uh, dickhead, right? E every single one of them is like, oh, what a prick. What a prick. Right, straight away. So as much as I really want to take the piss out of you, this is really well written. Very well written, so hats off to you. Um, as the smell violated the very laws of nature, Donald sat down, a, uh, a, set down, sorry, a large plastic carry case with his models, and I asked what army he had brought. And without a single word, he lifted up a thickly painted room priest into the air like the Holy Grail and attempted to make choir noises. <laughs> to, to be fair, I've done that. I've done that. I knew this was going to be a long day. Prepare to have your army crushed by the might of Odin, he said in a snarky voice, while looking at the cross tattoo, uh, at the cross tattooed on my forearm. I quickly realised that he was an active worshipper of the Norse pagan pantheon of gods, and had made our game personal in his own mind. I stated politely that I didn't really care, and I was just trying to learn the game, and that winning was not high on my agenda that day, only having some fun with him. Donald snickered like an anime villain preparing to give a seven episode long plot synopsis and with the flick of his wrist and the slow closing of all of his fingers one by one into a fist he claimed that it would be impossible for me to win because he was far more experienced all the while still holding his model with the other hand. Okay, let's play the game, I said as I refused to give any reason to, what, uh, to whatever this poor tortured soul was trying to do. Through the setup and start of the game, Donald made several comments about how my Necrons were inferior to his Space Vikings, and that by round five, we would hear the cries of our women as he pillaged our homes. Donald obviously had at this point revealed that he had had some severe untreated mental issues and deviant uh, sexual fantasies about Viking R.A.P.E. and plundering that for whatever reason couldn't be played out by his overly stated love for Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Okay, fair enough. Um, I don't know, man. I mean, I, 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 I mean, yeah, I, I guess so. Like, really weird jokes like that can just fall flat. It doesn't mean like he actually has these fantasies, you know. It just mean it might just mean that he just. I don't know. I don't know. It took all the military discipline in me not to give him the reactions he was looking for with his behaviour. And the following list of offences are what are what most of us would consider completely intoler intolerable. Donald, the disgusting duck, was a bit of a cheater. Firstly, he had no codex or rules present because he was too good to, to need a reference, quote unquote, and he had, and I quote, had his favourite army rules memorised, unquote. All he had was data cards. Okay. First of all, mate, okay, Charlie, Charles, right, Charlie? Don't play a guy who doesn't have his codex. I don't. I don't care how experienced you are. If you turn up to a game with me without a codex, right, or a rule book, or, or whatever rules you, or, our Games Workshop have given for your faction, we are not playing. I don't give a shit if they're on your phone, right? You need your book there. I don't want to be playing a game of 40k with somebody's nose buried in their phone the entire time. Because I don't know whether you're texting, whether you're doing whatever. I want your attention to play this game, please. Right? So you need your codex. And if, if, you, if your faction doesn't have a codex, you need your rules there with you. Right? From whatever index you've got. If you don't have those two things, I'm not playing you. Simple. Especially if I don't know you. Especially if, I, if you're a first time person, I've never played you before, have your rules. Because I don't know what's in your codex. I want to learn. I want to read, right? All right. However, he would question every single action, unit, and army rule I used, accusing me of cheating to the point where, by my half of round two, 
I elected to read directly and loudly from the core rulebook, codex and datasheet I had on hand in order to not give them the chance to make an objection with every single move or roll that I made. Oh my, that's it, dude, no. No. As a, as a military man, dude, you've got to know. Just, just don't play. Alright? Just don't play. Secondly, he would make every dice roll conveniently behind terrain pieces, so that he could change the results if he did not like them. I asked him to roll in the open every time he would attempt to do this, and he would stop, but then start to hide his rolls again once, I thought I, once he thought I wasn't paying attention anymore. This went on for the whole game. He broke several other rules as well, like consolidating infantry units out of melee and into cover, disembarking from, a, from an impulsor after it had moved, and allowing units in melee to fight even though they were not eligible to do so. On the outside, I was completely unbothered by this, which visibly upset him. It's like he wanted the attention of being a bully, as he was publicly a victim of that at one point, uh, oh, sorry, as he was probably a victim of that at one point, and never decided not to be one any... No, sorry? I never decided not to be anymore? I don't know what that means. Anyway, moving on. Fast forward to battle round five. All but one squad of my warriors and a squad of assault intercessors remained on one of my home, ob on my home objective. Donald sneered in triumph, proudly stating that he always wins by annihilation, as his intercessors cut down the last of my warriors and charge onto my objective. He began to do a little dance, thanking Odin for his victory to the bizarre stares of several others in the store. He then stopped and asked me why I was smiling, and said that I should be upset that I had lost. I pointed out to Donald, much to his disbelief, that a single scarab swarm had remained hidden and untouched in some ruins, and that this would fall down to a point's victory. Donald erupted into a fit of rage, making countless objections to why it was not fair that I had just left the scarabs there, and that I should have used them. I reminded this thick-skulled, smelly ogre that it was my army, and I could play them as I fucking well pleased. He was livid. The thing about people who cheat is that more often than not, they lose or get caught because they are more focused on the act of cheating than they are actually winning the game or succeeding in what they're trying to do. So, I proudly read the score aloud. The score was 53 to the Necrons and 42 to the Space Wolves. I had insisted on scoring the game in the Tabletop Battles app at the start because I had had the feeling that he was going to cheat based on his behaviour. Hmm. Okay. Donald stood silent, almost pale in the face, and began to snatch up his models very quickly. He muttered something about how I cheated, but I quickly reminded him that due to his constant objections, I read from the core rulebook and my codex the entire game. The only ammunition he had left was to insult my painting ability, stating that my models were not even painted well, and that he should have won because his army was the better one. I told him that it was just a game, and that winning is not everything. I wish I could say everybody in the store cheered at his defeat, but he received mostly quiet looks from the other patrons as he stormed out of the store, muttering since they were all pretty familiar with him. Okay. After I had packed up, I asked one of the employees if they knew him, and much to my surprise, I was informed that he had not been into the store to play in a while, as nobody in the gaming community wanted to play with him. I also found out he was banned from another store in the area for cheating at a cash prize tournament, and that I must be new to the hobby and the scene if I was hanging out with him at all. It was very satisfying to know that I had beaten him whilst not cheating, but even more so that I had beaten an army list that exceeded the 500 point cap that we had agreed on. The employee told me that he was banned from trying to play, uh, for trying to play more units than was allowed for the points cap, so we went into battle scribe for, and from memory drew up the list that, that, uh, that he'd had uh, just played against me. Surely enough, my 500 points of Necrons faced off and beat at least 600 points of Space Wolves, fair and square. In closing, I cannot imagine the sheer pungent shame one must feel to lose at a game of Plastic Army Men when you've attempted to cheat at every aspect of said game. That shame must almost be as filthy as Donald's unwashed neckbeard. 
Thank you so much for taking the time to read this, North. I appreciate you and your channel, and hope to hear your thoughts on this encounter. I would love to buy you a pint, whatever form works best, as a token of appreciation, of appreciation, sorry, from the US. Cheers. Thanks, man. Um, so, as I just said during the readout there, th this game should have stopped way before you had that ending there. Because while that one worked out quite well for you, and I'm quite glad that it did, you know, well done to you, I also can't help but feel that you got away lightly. Alright, there are a lot of not nice scenarios where this could have spun into a real, real bad form of hobby nightmare that we just don't want to hear. Do you know what I mean? Physical altercations, people being banned from stores, all kind of stuff like that. We don't want that, you know what I mean? Um, I would have stopped play maybe at round two here when, you know, I'm having to read from my codex the entire time. And to be honest with you, I would have not played this guy at all. I would say, look, I'm sorry for wasting your time, man. If you don't have a codex or your rules on you, not on your phone, I mean on you physically so I can look at them. I don't want to touch your phone, right? I don't know you. If you don't have your rules here physically for me to look at, I'm not playing you. That's it, right? Maybe we can get your codex from the store and we can borrow one for the game. I wouldn't mind doing that. But without your codex here, so that we can both look at the rules when something comes up that I think is a bit iffy, or maybe, you know, something goes on, I'm not playing you. Now, I'm not the kind of person who just goes out of his way to, to read all of the rules from your codex, right? Most of the time, I'll leave things alone, or I'll want to look at it out of sheer curiosity for future reference, you know what I mean? If there's a if there's a rule that there that's quite cool that, you know, a space marine army can do, I'll look at it. So, oh, where's that? That's cool. Show me that, right? And I'll do that kind of a thing. And very rarely will I say, listen, man, I've got to call bullshit. I need to look at that rule, please. You know? In general, I won't really do that. But anyway. Moving on. Uh, Church says, Hello, Mr. North. Hello, Church. Thank you very much for saying Mr. Very nice. For this, please call me Church. And please have patience while reading this. I don't like using it as a crutch, but I do have dyslexia. And dysphragia? Dysgraphia? I don't know. Maybe I've got dyslexia. I don't know. Because I can't really read that. I don't like using it as a crutch. But I do have dyslexia and dysgraphia. Which is like dyslexia. But instead of scrambling information going in. It scrambles information coming out. I have worked very hard to overcome it. Every now, every now and then. But I still make silly mistakes. Uh, it sounds less intrusive. Than, than uh, dyslexia, because at least you're understanding what's going on. You just can't formulate your response. Do you know what I mean? But you are understanding what's going on. I don't know. I can't pass judgment. Anyway. Anyway, I have been into miniature soldiers since I was very young. My mother would play the audiobook of The Hobbit on the way to and from school since kindergarten. And it's still my favourite book. My grandmother took me on an out-of-state trip to visit my uncle when I was younger. And whilst I was there, he showed me his miniature collection. He had it all. A couple of custom tables, orcs, elves, samurai, Napoleonic troops, ships for ocean battles, historic models, fantasy models, large-scale battles or skirmishes. My love for the Hobbit had me thinking of the Battle of the Five Armies, and I was immediately hooked. He even gave me my first miniature, a marauder from the game Battletech. After returning home, I eventually talked my parents into taking me into the city about half an hour away, because at the time, my hometown was too small to have its own game store. That's the root of the first problem, I guess, since it was a kid at the store, who, uh, since it was a kid, so, sorry, since I was a kid, right, correcting for you there, sorry about that, since I was a kid and the store was a decent drive away. I collected the minis and painted them for about 10 years with only one opportunity to play. When I left home to join the military, I had decided to give the hobby up. Fortunately, I had a woman that cared about my interests and a couple of years later, she, she heard me talking about one of my old hobbies. She was genuinely happy to hear about this thing and had brought me so much joy in the past. She wanted to know much more about it. So we found a local game store where I was stationed and picked up a singular miniature and some paints. The love of the hobby was back with a vengeance. Even the woman I was with, and who I ended up marrying, 
got into it. Mate, I am not surprised you married this woman. I am not surprised. Um, ladies, I'm going to be frank with you, as I often am on this channel. And uh, thank you for emails, by the way. I'd never read them out, because uh, a lot of you use your real names, and I've got no idea why you do that. But anyway, um, I need to be frank in, in my advice here. As, as guys, right, we want a woman to be feminine, right, non-problematic, okay, supportive and kind. Those are the four pillars, right, feminine, which goes into looks as well, do you know what I mean, okay, non-problematic, supportive and kind. The reason why I say non-problematic is because as guys, you have to realise uh, especially in the modern world, right? We gotta deal with some shit. And um, men, men fight battles every day. Women have it hard too. I know being a human's not great sometimes, but uh, you know, at least nowadays things are becoming a little bit easier, a little bit easier for women. Uh, I know. And in terms of men, listen, as a father who's just had to go through what I've had to go through with my family, I've been told by family lawyers. That if, I, if my gender was different, if I was a mother, I wouldn't be facing these issues that I'm facing right now. Okay? I'm not going to go into this. It's nothing I've done. I've not done anything wrong in this situation. I'm picking up somebody else's mess. Right? A, a huge mess has occurred in, in my family's life that I am now fixing. Right? That, that's what I've been doing these past couple of, couple, couple of weeks. Um... And I've been told by family lawyers, both mine and the other parties, that if I was a woman... This, you know, I, I wouldn't, I would have, um, let's say, a lot more support than I do now in doing what I'm doing, right? Uh, yeah. So, what I'm trying to say is, we fight battles because the world doesn't give a shit about us. So, a man goes out there and he and he tries to compete against other men and women, right? Everybody, he's trying to compete against everybody to get what he needs to get, to be supportive, to support your family, to be there, to be the breadwinner, right? It's not easy. So the last thing we want is to come home and fight more battles. You can either be on my side or fucking leave. And do you know what, ladies? You should say that to your man as well. Because it's getting hard for you too out there in the jungle, right? What you don't want when you come home is somebody who makes you fight more battles in your safe space. In your sanctuary. The home is the sanctuary, right? I so maybe fall in, love, fall in love with my missus. She's not problematic at all. She's the most least problematic woman I think I've ever met. You know? Literally. Whole package. Whole package. Gorgeous. Non-problematic. Right? Kind. Absolutely kind. You know? All those four pillars she hits. And, and I'm very, very, very lucky. But at the same time... I would trade the other three for that non-problematic one. You know, maybe not kindness. I would take kindness and non-problematic over everything else. You know? This is why I'm very glad you married this woman. Because uh, she seems non-problematic and kind and supports you in your... This is the kind of person you can build a nest with, dude. This is what I'm saying. This is the kind of woman you can actually build a life with. Build a, a, a comfor comfortable, stable, joy-filled family. And it's only since I've gotten into my 30s that I've recognized that uh, getting laid isn't isn't the be-all end-all, dude. Raising a family is the be-all end-all. There is so much joy in having a family and building a place for your family to be safe in. I've, I've, it's what I've, what I've wanted for years now. I've tried it with different people, not worked out, right? Now I've got somebody that it is working out with and it's only making me think that I've made the right choice. I don't miss hookup culture at all. I don't miss it. You know? If you find a woman like this, a woman who supports your hobbies, who supports what you like, who who has your back, right? And takes stress away. Just as you take stress away from her, she takes it away from you. Right? She goes out of her way to make sure that you have what you need mentally. Slap a fucking ring on her finger and drag her down the aisle. All right, I'm telling you now. Do whatever it takes. Ask her dad. Do all of the romantic shit. 
Ask her dad for her hand in marriage if she wants. Do whatever she needs to do to get her down that aisle. Because that's, that's your woman, dude. That's it. Alright? This is why I don't subscribe to men, men going their own way. I don't subscribe to it. I don't. I think you might need to do it temporarily. Maybe. To clear your head. And to get your own life sorted out. But staying that bitter and that angry at women your entire life only leads to misery. And spreading more misery to other people, right? Anyway. Uh, so I got back with my tomb kings and my wife got with her lizard men. That sounds wrong, okay? We tried playing but kept getting the rules wrong and decided we needed help. But 40k was what was played in the local game stores. No, it wasn't my original Tomb King army, as my parents had sold them, and my ha um, and my High Elf army at a garage sale, alongside everything else I didn't take with me to boot camp, including the car I had bought with my own money. And no, they didn't feel the need to pass along any of the money made from the sales either. Dude, that sucks. That sucks. A few of my friend in friends in the military were, were into for the 40k version of Warhammer, and one of them suggested Black Templars. Of course he did. Based... Based military dude. Of course he did. Get your Black Templars, son. So I bought some Black Templars and a few other boxes and I decided I wanted to play with them. Uh, I wanted to play as Black Templars, but paint them with a desert camo look. That's cool. Just because. I still had no real idea how game stores handled in-store play, so I didn't argue when the players and the store owner told me I couldn't play them because I didn't have the upgrade kits on them and they weren't painted like Black Templars. Dude, fuck them! Fuck them! The fuck's that all about? It's, it's your models, dude. As long as you're following the rules, go fuck yourself. Get a life. I just left defeated as I had. I put a lot of time and money into this army and thought that I had messed it up. Dude, they're, they're dickheads, dude. You shouldn't listen to them. Go and find your people. I don't know if they just didn't want to deal with a new player or if the shop owner thought he could get me to buy an upgrade kit for each of my squads. Before you ask, yes, I had 40k friends in the military, but our schedules almost never lined up for off time when we weren't deployed. Fair enough, man. Fair enough. I got injured. Nothing heroic, just a stupid training accident. Then got a medical discharge. I got sent back home with that great woman who I had married. We may have gotten married young and had kids before we had planned, but we are going on 12 years and are still very much in love. Dude, brilliant. Fantastic. The military will hire moving companies to send your belongings back by truck to meet up with you wherever it is that you're moving to when you, uh, when you separate from them. Before we even get back to my hometown, we got a call telling us that there had been an accident and the moving truck with all of our stuff had burned up. Oh no! Including all of our Warhammer stuff, but it wasn't their fault, so they wouldn't need to compensate us. Oh no! Oh, no. If you're keeping track... That's the second time I lost everything to my name other than what I had on my back when I arrived. Needless to say, I had more important things than toy soldiers on my mind and it would take about a year before I really had the chance to get into the hobby again. Dude, your relationship has survived bullets to the fucking brain here. You brilliant stuff. The wife was as eager as me to get back into it though, especially because the game stores near where we lived did have people that played Warhammer Fantasy. Unfortunately, this was only a few months before the end times, and they took my beloved two Tomb Kings and High Elves away with the old world. <laughs> Dude, like, fate is just is just not letting you play Warhammer. I, this is horrible. <laughs> this is absolutely... Just when you get, like, I now have my army, Kings Workshop, go, ha-ha, there's no more old world. It's all dead. You can't play that anymore in our stores. Oh, my God. We just ended up going with 40k armies, but didn't really know what to go with. We asked the guy working at the shop, and he was more than happy to go over the different factions and find and help us finding armies. Of course he was. There's money in it for him. The wife went with Tyranids. Of course she did. She's a woman. And I went with Tau. After building and painting up some of my own Tau, and fixing some that I bought from a guy selling his old stuff, I took my models and books to a local game store a few times, looking for help learning the rules and how to play. That's when I ran into an Imperial Guard guy. I really thought I was fortunate to run into a guy so willing to help. After all, he even sat down with me in my codex 
and helped me write up a list. He explained the rules quickly and wanted to show me how to play with the game, uh, so I thought that it was a great idea. My tower were going up against his Imperial tank guard tank army, but as soon as our armies were deployed, his helpful demeanour changed. He was going for the throat, and he wouldn't talk to me except when it was absolutely necessary, like when he pointed out that my crisis suits couldn't fire on his tank because they didn't have weapons. I was confused, and he said that I could uh, it, sorry, and he said that I could check my list, you know, the one he basically wrote for me, and then explain that pretty much the only weapons I had in my army were the free guns that my crew had. He wasn't interested in talking with me, but he did start up into a full-blown conversation with somebody else walking by about how clever his list was. I couldn't understand what his deal was until I started listening to your channel years later and heard the lengths people will go to uh, for anything that they can call a win. Yeah, dude, it, it, it definitely does happen. Alright, shortly after I got my job back in my hometown, uh, in which, I'd grown, sorry, which had grown enough to get its own game store, I changed armies again because of the bad taste I had every time I looked at my towel. But this new store had a great community. The store changed hands and the new owner was cheesy, and, and uh, I don't mean dad jokes cheesy, more like a guy who grew up with wealthy parents and his first job is as a motivational speaker on business success. I didn't let him bother me too much as I was finally getting some games in, until one guy, a buddy of mine and I showed up for a game, only to see all the tables full. We shrugged and decided to just play at my place, when the owner runs over to us see, uh, with our armies and asks us if we were trying to get a game in. We said we, we understood that all the tables were full and it's no problem, and that it's okay because we could just play at my place. I don't remember exactly what he said, but the way he said it, uh, I thought we, he meant one of the... T sorry, I'm going to read that again. I don't remember exactly what he said, but the way he said it, I thought he meant one of the tables was almost done with their game. Instead, he goes over to a table of two kids, not even high school age, and tells them to pack the fuck up. <laughs> oh, shit. I was so embarrassed. I felt terrible for those kids. I tried telling him, really, it's okay. But he'd already decided we were going to be the ones playing on that table, table and that was that. Well, you don't know what those kids were doing, man. They could have been really, really little shithouses. You don't know. Fortunately, he hired a really cool guy to run the store for him. And we'll call him Mike. Mike actually loved the hobby, but really built a strong community in the store. He ran campaigns, escalation leagues, painting classes, games for people that hadn't bought their first mini. And even though he was a good player, he never won one of those games. He even organised regular painting competitions. And not to brag, but I won several times. Okay, maybe I'm bragging a little. I learned a lot more about the game and painting, and made some new friends playing in the Escalation League. Unfortunately, the owner fired Mike a couple of years later. I won't go into too many details because I'm not trying to start up any drama in case anybody else from the game store listens to you. I will say the owner was accusing Mike of things that were flat out untrue, and the firing was done very publicly due to an in-store event Mike was running. I wasn't there, but some people said it was like the owner was, was doing it to, hum to humiliate Mike. And Mike was devastated. Myself, dude, it, it, nerds with power. I'm telling you, nerds with power, there's nothing more corruptible. I'm telling you now. Uh, because uh, guys who've been bullied their entire lives, as soon as the shoe is on the other foot, they never, they never fail to let you down. Do you know what I mean? They always go harder than the bullies that they had when they were, they, when they were younger. What they got when they were younger, they give it out tenfold. Shitheads. I'm telling you now. Myself and a lot of the other 40k players I knew there stopped going because we can't stand how the owner runs the store now. I wanted to reach out to some of the guys from the shop on the Discord that had been run by Mike for the shop only to find that those of us who had been good friends with Mike had been removed from said Discord. I love this hobby, but it feels like two steps forward and one step back. My wife and I still play from time to time at our place, and I have a couple of friends that will come over and play occasionally. The way so many people were when I had, uh, sorry, the way so many people were when I had no idea what I was doing makes me wonder how the hobby got so popular in the first place. Like you say, it's a bucket. It'll be empty if you try to put a lid on it or or keep out the new water. I hope this wasn't too long. Thanks for reading. No, mate, it was amazing. Absolutely amazing, epic hobby nightmare. 
Um, what I will say is that, yeah, you're completely true. But, mate, do me a favor, right? Do me a favor. Look at your wife. Look at your friends. And look at the games you get in maybe once or twice a month. And realize, church, my friend, how fucking lucky you are. I don't play ever. Because there's nobody around me who plays. Okay? The Games Workshop in my city won't play games. And every single gaming store that I know is a fucking Yu-Gi-Oh backwater. That has no scenery. And, and no nowhere to really play games. Alright? It fucking sucks. And just realise, don't lose faith in the hobby, dude. You're actually one of the lucky ones. You're getting games in, and you've probably got a hot wife to play with, too. You're winning. So take yes for an answer. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, all right? All right. I love you a long time. I will speak to you tomorrow uh, for some more uh, Hobby Nightmares. I love you all, and I'll see you soon, all right? Bye now.